And you're listening to Jenna Queries on 100.5 FM, CFRO, Vancouver's Corporate Radio. And joining us now is Ross Johnstone from the National Film Board. Go ahead and let us know what you do there and let us know your pronouns. Thanks for having me. Yes, my name is Ross Johnstone. I use he, him. And I have a few hats that I wear at the National Film Board, but essentially uh, my, my primary role is on the education team. So um, I'm responsible for getting NFB films out into classrooms K to 12, but also post-secondary and public libraries all across Western Canada, which is my territory. And then one of the other hats I wear on more of a volunteer capacity is um, being the NFB's pride champion. Um, so focused on 2S LGBTQIA plus issues, both within the film board, uh, kind of internally, um, but also within uh, the public service at large, where uh, there's a larger kind of uh, queer network um, that I participate on as well. Yeah, so I might be dating myself a bit, but when I think of the National Film Board, you know, I think Log Drivers Vaults, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think of that logo from 1978. But you have a, like you have this new collection on your website, and can you tell us more about it? Yeah, well, I'm glad you mentioned the nostalgia factor because absolutely, it's still the same logo. So we've that is a classic iconic logo, and sometimes the shade or the color changes slightly, but it's still our all seen person uh, that kind of doubles as a a camera lens sort of uh, very. Uh, 19 sort of 50s Canadiana um, and as, as you mentioned uh, you know it's fun when, when when I'm presenting our collection mostly to educators in, in my specific role people tell the story and it might be the log driver's waltz it could be the hockey sweater of course um, or you know some of those other classic films and they all talk about you know when the teacher would reel in, reel in the projector and they literally have to take a, a piece of film and thread it through a machine, sometimes the bulb would light on fire. And anyone of a certain age, not to date myself, um, has had that experience in their classroom. Um, so often I, I am getting that kind of um, memory or nostalgia as, as a really nice kind of icebreaker when I'm talking to people about the larger collection and the, and the more contemporary collection. So uh, you're not alone. <laughs> and, um, and indeed, you know, we, we have been producing for over 80 years in Canada, but we continue um, to put out, you know, upwards of 100 productions a year from all the various studios across the country, including the, the BC Yukon studio here in Vancouver. Um, so tons of new films coming out every year, lots of new contemporary filmmakers. And, um, and so there's a lot of new stories, including queer stories from um, from two SLGBTQIA plus uh, filmmakers. Yeah, you have a bunch of really great stuff on there. Uh, you have a bunch of local Vancouver artists that we know of and filmmakers. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a favorite on there that you like? Oh, geez, gosh. I'm not can to put I you on the spot. Than, <laughs> can I say more than one? Yeah. Uh, okay, how about I group them in genre? Because uh, as you know, the film board is probably, well, is definitely most renowned for for two genres really um, documentary and animation that's 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 makes up the vast majority of the collection not to be forgotten though is our interactive collection which also falls into the more contemporary side i can speak to that a bit later all to say i would say uh why don't i pick one from each genre so from the animation side i love the film um i like girls or j'aime les filles en français that's by Diane Obamswin, who is an uh, Indigenous filmmaker at the Film Board. And there's lots of intersectionality within our queer collection, too, which is really nice. Um, a terrific short animated film that's just about different stories of young girls in love in lesbian relationships. And so I strongly recommend people go out and Google that one. You can watch that for free on nfb.ca. Actually, all of these films I'm going to mention, you can do so. And within the documentary genre, I love the film Someone Like Me, a fairly recent film that's from our BC studio. So Sean Horler and Steve Adams are the filmmakers, and they're based here in Vancouver. It's a terrific film that, uh, or a power of a film that, sh that shows the story of a rainbow refugee circle. So a circle of people here in Vancouver that have gotten together as donors to bring refugee, uh, in this case, it follows a young man from Kenya. And, and there's all the kind of ups and then the downs of what it's like to be a refugee in a country like Canada. There's some very poignant moments. You know, one that stands out for me is somebody moving to this part of the world to be themselves, to be 
queer and out and proud when they're coming from a place where that's illegal, you know, with some brutal punishments. However, they get here and they confront racism for the first time because, you know, yeah. they, they're they living in a predominantly, you know, white neighborhood. And that is a really interesting kind of starting point for kind of the second part of the film. And then finally, I'm going to plug a interactive work called Untied Shoes, which is a fun online kind of interactive experience that was also produced here in Vancouver. When you get to the site, it looks like you're on a retail shoe website and you're buying a pair of sneakers. Um, but then as you click into the cart and want to check out, you actually get a terrific story from a non-binary artist who's based in Saskatchewan telling their story of gender conformity or non-conformity using kind of the different shoes as a metaphor. So all sorts of interesting projects that are kind of my favorites that I like to pitch in particular within the education sphere for different reasons. Yeah. So a lot of these projects, you're helping out, right? I'm helping out in uh, the distribution sense in my role. Um, so, so yeah, my, really, these are things I want people to see, and in particular within the, 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 the market of education. So K-12 to again and, and the post-secondary. So my role really isn't necessarily from the um, creative side, although we do get creative in the ways that we try to promote these to our different target audiences. So really, that's why I'm working with the films, for sure. Yeah. And so the National Film Board, it, it helps out with these films, right? And producing them and helping you filmmakers really gain a foothold. That's right. Yeah. You know, our, our, our model is quite unique, like in the world. Um, you know, you absolutely wouldn't find a, an equivalent to south of our border in the U.S. And even in Europe, where there is probably more support for independent filmmakers, say, than, than in some other parts of the world. But yeah, the film board reviews projects. And when we decide we want to work with an artist on a specific project, what the film board is there to do is to provide the full infrastructure. So the, the dollars to produce it, the editors to edit it, the marketing machine to then promote it, and the distribution machine to get it out there. So that's what's really unique about the film board. Yeah. And so one of the deadlines coming up, or partnerships, is coming up on October 15th. And I'm wondering if you can talk more about that. Like, how would people go ahead and apply? Yeah, there's different ways. And again, um, not being part of our production stream, I think the best thing advice I can do is tell people to, to check out our website. In fact, we have a brand new section called Create with the NFB. You can just Google that, Create with the National Film Board, and you'll get to a page that has a bunch of different sort of tabs and links on it. Walks any filmmaker through the process. If you're wanting to pitch a project to us, that's the place to start. Uh, just to some background, for the most part, we're not working with brand new filmmakers to produce a feature or a short. Um, we're looking to work with artists that you know have uh, some experience under their belt. That said, there is the FAP assistance program, which can be accessed by new filmmakers. And that is another application process that you'll do in your region. So if you're here in Vancouver, you'll, you'll apply to the BC studio. And uh, essentially, that can give you some extra bucks, some extra dollars to help finish a film, really, that you're working on. Um, so those are sort of the two main ways that you can get involved and, and potentially work with the NFB. Yeah, and the Filmmaker Assistance Program, you also have some technical support. That's right, yeah. So it's interesting, you talked about this as kind of a, a one-off thing in terms of countries that are supporting their own local filmmakers. And I guess, why is that important in today's day and age? Oh, geez, I don't know where to start with that one. <laughs> well, you know, I think the biggest thing is just over time, how much of a media world we live in. Video guides everything. So whether you're a filmmaker or whether you're just a teenager in high school, <laughs> you know, you are on line, you are on your phone, you're creating videos. And I think about you know, some unfortunate incidents in some ways, like like when we go back to thinking about what happened with George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement, like there's a really good example of something that would have never happened if someone didn't pick up a camera and hit record, right? So just at a very basic level, the importance of film or the impact, I guess, that film and video is having now is more than ever, because this is just the way we're communicating. So that's important. I think the other piece is that we're at a place, or at least our rhetoric is at a place right now, where we're talking about really important issues like decolonization, like equity, diversity, inclusion. And 
film is a really important tool to provide voice to underrepresented communities. So in Canada, for example, you know, the NFB has prioritized Indigenous filmmaking for some time now, but really that we had a whole kind of list of commitments that we've made to respond to the TRC's 99 actions. And that translates into film and cinema, having some contemporary Indigenous filmmakers, including two spirit filmmakers, share their story and having that story have sort of equal airplay along with all the other stories. And then, as I mentioned before, looking at that intersectionality too is really important. Again, back to my specific role at the film board, which is schools. It's amazing to hear the response from educators that I work with when they say, all I had to do was press play on that film. And suddenly all these kids who were not, haven't been engaged all year, got it. You know, it was the film. It was having the artist's authentic voice tell the story is what clicked. And then, you know, help support the larger lesson that that teacher is trying to teach within the curriculum. So For all those reasons, you know, I I think the work that not just the NFB, but all independent organizations are doing is just so much more vital now than ever. Absolutely. So if people want to reach you or educators want to reach you, what's the best way? For me, two ways. Really, the easiest way is to email me. So my email is easy. It's r.johnstone with an E at nfb.ca. And if you forget that, you could just contact our client services team. So info at nfb.ca, and that's written all over our website in many different places. And let them know you're looking to get in touch with that guy who was being interviewed on that show. (laughs) And they'll be able to get in touch with me. Or they'll be able to forward you on to somebody else that might even have more pertinent communication with you. Yeah. And you also have a YouTube channel. We do. Yes. The NFB is on YouTube. Super We're active. On, yeah, it's very active. Many of the films that stream for free on nfb.ca can also be found on the YouTube page. So whatever your preference, go to either. Although I do got to say on our main website page, you'll find it easier to kind of scroll through things by theme. Yeah. Um, but regardless, um, what's nice about the YouTube channel, of course, well, we do this on our main page too, is we keep it updated to kind of reflect what's going on in the calendar or maybe in news topics of of the time. So like, for example, right now, I know that we are promoting one of our channels that speaks about gender diversity and inclusion, given some of the latest um, anti-trans and anti-non-binary demonstrations that um, sadly we've been seeing, not just across this country, but beyond. Yeah, this week has been uh, interesting in Abbotsford and Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, today's announcement has been interesting as well. And we'll be talking about that on the show in just a bit. Thanks so much for coming on and thanks for all the work you do. Uh, Thanks so much for having me on the show. And please check out the collection. There's more than 4,000 films that you can stream for free on nfb.ca. And that was Ross Johnstone from the National Film Board.